<laughs> Staring at the city. Can you go ahead and start off by telling them your name? Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Dim Atlas. Peace, peace. And uh, so what are you doing? What's going on? What, what do you do? Um, I am an MC um, with Rhyme Series Entertainment. I like to make songs. I sing uh, rock and roll, funk, drone rap, whatever I feel like doing. What was that last term? Drone rap. Say more about that. It's like, uh, it's, it's like, uh, it's very like inspired by like 80s synth, dark, dark wave music. Um, it's melodic and it's usually kind of like shoegazy, which is like spacey and, and distorted. Hmm. Okay. Is that <laughs> something that you came up with? Um, no, I think, I, I think it's a term. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like grunge, grungy. It's. It's drone is a genre of music which is like really atmospheric and and like hums, you know. Mm -hmm. You mentioned rhyme sayers. What is rhyme sayers? Rhyme sayers. That's the uh, that's the local that's the local hip hop uh, label, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, most notably, started by Atmosphere and uh, Brother Ali, Idea and Abilities, and um, yeah, it's 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 definitely done a lot in the community and has inspired me um, to want to MC. One of the many, one of the many like groups like that has inspired me to want to MC and make music. Who's inspired you to want to MC and make music? Oh man, um, I think I think it was Nas. I think it was the first time I heard Illmatic. That's when it really clicked. Um, also Far Side and uh, I don't know, man. Just like it really clicked in high school when I, <laughs> I'm making music with my man Nathan E. J. here, <laughs> and it it just made sense. You know, so many like years went past where I wasn't listening to the words; I was listening to the beats. Um, but then it just really clicked. I was going through some 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 turmoil in school and in my home life, and that's when it made more sense. I felt isolated at school so rap music I, I really gravitated towards rapping then because I, I wanted to get my story out hmm. you know so not only did it let you get your story out but it was a form of a release yeah yeah just just expression just like oh freedom freedom to be who I was to be and that's what I see from like the MCs and, 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 and rappers and performers that I loved a lot is that they were unbounded. They were just expressing their life and telling their story and being their authentic true self. They weren't trying to be like the next man. They were innovators and that's what I strive to be. Two part question. Mm -hmm. First, um, when did you sign with Rhyme Sayers and how did that come to be? And second, what did you learn? What have you learned? Mm -hmm. What have you learned since then? So I signed with Rhyme Sayers, um, like, I want to say in November of 2013. And um, that was a huge accomplishment because it came off the heels of an EP that I released called Charlie Brown. And before that, I was, I was, I didn't know what the, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I was just making music, having fun. I would play like two or three shows a week sometimes and like, uh, I, <laughs> barely, barely anybody would show up and get paid nugs of weed because the promoters didn't have any money supposedly. You know what I mean? And um, and but I didn't care. I just it was I performed in front of ten, twenty people, like it was was a uh, was an arena. Like it was like I just I saw the future. You know, I saw what could be, and uh, word spread around, and then. Um, Kevin Beecham from Rhyme Sayers took notice, and then uh, I opened for Greaves at this show at the at the Triple Rock, and and um, yeah, apparently that was like the testing ground. And shortly after that, I met with this cat named Sadiq, who's a co-owner of the label Rhyme Sayers, and he asked if he wanted to work with me, and enthusiastically I say yes, and. I guess so far it's taught me just, uh, just, you know, the other side of, of, of this music thing, the music business as, um, 
the hustle and, and to, to, to obviously work hard, all of that, yeah. But just the, the other side of it, which is the touring and, um, and the branding and what you're trying to do. And so they're kind of a machine that's, that's, uh, that's helping me realize my vision. And um, I don't know, it's just taught me more about connecting with people and connecting with uh, the fans. And um, What's life on the road like? hard <laughs> fun it's um it's it's a party every night and um it's 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 you can get swept up and it can be lonely sometimes like you're playing in front of these people and you're just you're the music man you're you're the entertainment um but i want to be more than the entertainment i want to be like the teacher i want to be like give you an experience so you go home with thoughts that you didn't have prior to you coming to the show um and uh what's your favorite place out there that you've been to my favorite place would probably have to be um i love cali <laughs> this is uh this really dope town called san luis obispo i played at this cafe it was like a hundred or maybe less than that that came to the show but it was it was such a great intimate experience and um, nice hazy town I liked it cool cool um, what's something that you struggle with mmm I think I struggle with self-doubt I think I'm still trying to realize <clears throat> my voice and who I am as an artist I struggled with that for a bit because I was comparing myself to other people rather than looking inward and looking at myself and my gifts and what I have to contribute. I think I've come closer to that now, but I still have a long way to go. Yeah, I, uh, some, another artist that I respect, her name's Rachel, um, and uh, she said to me when I was first getting started, before I was even performing as, as Dim Atlas, she said that... <laughs> And she told me that one of the most powerful things another artist can do is, is be naked and be vulnerable because there's so many times we walk through life trying to wear a mask, wearing a mask. And I think people are so intrigued by the music um, and come to see performers um, that are willing to go there, are willing to be naked and vulnerable on stage, you know? So that's, that's something that's always been that's, I've always gravitated to from like some of my favorite artists such as Nirvana and, and, and James Brown, Michael Jackson. Does it scare you? Um, does it scare me? Um, I'd have to say before going on stage is where I feel most, the most anxiety, you know. Um, but once I'm on stage, I just go. I feel like possessed. Yeah. <laughs> What's upcoming? What do you want people to know that's upcoming? Like if this were a commercial for, for what's upcoming for you, what would you tell them? I just got back from the road. I was with Greaves on tour and that was a great experience. Lots of learning there. <laughs> and the shows were dope. But I'm really excited to, uh, to release this new album. I finished it over the summer. Entirely produced by Ant from Atmosphere. And um, yeah, that's the, that's the first time I'm actually saying that on camera. And um, put a lot of love into that, a lot of love, and it's very vulnerable, very naked, and I think people are gonna be surprised. What do you see going on in Minnesota? Man, I see, uh, I see, t I, see uh, I see two sides. I mean, put it in a simple spectrum, two sides, um, because obviously there's, it's not that simple. On one side, I see a lot of innovation, I see a lot of like crazy talent. I stick my toes and you know, and and a little bit of the punk scene, a little bit in the synth dark wave scene, uh pitch records, great 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 stuff happening there. Um and I see What's just that? What's that? Pitch records. Say more. Um they are like this they're this uh this kind of like retro dark wave synth label that started between C Costra and Nevada Don, and um, they're two—they're two friends of mine, and I really admire their sound. 
because it's it's all analog and I don't see a lot of cats doing that. I mean, and also there's like rock groups like Hippocampus who are some friends of mine um, and, and Bruce Violet, like really cool punk chicks. Um, so there's just like a lot of great things happening in Minnesota and a lot of people don't know about that. There's so much going on. We're like a microcosm because, you know, we're standing on the shoulders of giants like Prince and, and Bob Dylan and, and Atmosphere and, and, and countless others that came before us. So there's so, and that, and that trend continues. There's so much innovation happening. On another side, I see just like, you know, this, this thing we all know called the scene and, and it's cause kind of like, it can be shallow and fake, feel fake at times. You know, it's just kind of like, mm, same bubble, you know, just being a part of something that, that he say, she say, kind of like high school, uh, you know, and I learned a little bit about that because I feel like I've been in it and I see it for what it is when I now I choose to step out of that and just be where the innovation is and where I can find that happy place of just like being around like folks that aren't saying about popularity it's really just about <laughs> being your authentic self and giving us what you have to to offer that's just about the music it's just about the music nothing else and I see so many facets of of the business of of the marketing I, I see what goes into these processes of you seeing the release of an atmosphere record or a Brother Ali record and how much work that takes um, and how people are so used to just getting the end result as opposed to seeing all of the work that it is. Unless you are an artist, but um, those that don't make music, I, I see all of the work that goes in to making this happen. You know, from festivals like Soundset, pre, pre uh, Rhyme Series, I didn't really know how it all worked, you know? Um, and I see, I see a bit, I'm still naive, but I see a bit more of what goes into making all of this happen and making the ship stay afloat, you know? And we've talked, we talk about longevity and how we want to attain that and how I'm trying to get out on the road by myself instead of going out with somebody like Atmosphere or Greaves and just making my own career. And, um, yeah, because this, that's what it is at the end of the day. It's a career. It's a job um, that, frankly, I can't see myself doing anything else right now than music or creating in some form or capacity, you know. Shout out to you, the listener, the viewer, um, and shout out to my man Nathan Ijua for staring at the city and putting artists, you know, such as myself, you know, just, just just shining a light on the producers, the MCs, the activists in the city, because that's a really important thing, and I don't believe that we get enough recognition or praise for what we do and who we are. So thank you for shining a light, my brother. Peace, man. <laughs> uh, peace to everybody. You know, peace to all of the Twin Cities and all the artists and people that I can't really think of right now. Um, shout out to you. Staring at the city. Staring at the city. Staring at the city. Staring at the city. And you staring at the city. Yo, first of all, legendary organized confusion. Staring at the city. Staring at the city. Staring at the city.